All right, I'll let some people. That way, yeah, let me know you're in here because um, yeah, I don't know until I start seeing people, you know, propagate. Uh, we are discuss. We're going to discuss uh, what happened in Uvalde, Texas. You know, I, I went live last time, just what a week ago. Uh, uh, um, just a random live because of uh, well, this is not the same thing, but actually, it, it is the same thing. Uh, this country it fails its citizens constantly. This country, you know, you know this. I'm gonna go more into it. Just let, let more people come in, then I, I'll uh, discuss it. Hope everyone having a good day um, today. Um, I appreciate all the people who you know do support the platform. Um, you know, thank you, uh, new subscribers that's coming in. Appreciate it. Um, of course, as we stated before, um, if you'd like to leave a comment during any kind of live streams or um, what was that? or premieres, you know, you have to, you know, you can super chat it or you can uh, to become a channel member. Uh, that's something we're just doing across the board uh, from now on. And that's a perk, you know, for the people who do join the membership. So um, we want to give them that. But I'm gonna just wait a few, few more seconds and then we're gonna talk about it. Why this keep happening? Buckhorse, um, what's going on? And I got something to say to some some of my people as well, um, who say certain things to me when I, you know, try to give my version of solutions. All right, so here we go. Um, Decode Jenkins, he said, Foundation of Black American Pride, you know, right on. Okay, so um, today here in Texas, um, yeah, let me get to it. So here today in Texas, they had a, um, a very, very horrible, um, school massacre let's just call it what it is um you had a 18 year old um his name is uh, salvador ramos i think it's salvador ramos he went inside um, of an elementary school i think rob elementary um, in uvalde texas uh, with a handgun and now school zones are places that you can't even have guns but he went in there anyway with a gun and he start unloading. Um, when we heard about this initially, it was just a few people that passed away, but now there's 18 children who passed away um, from this, you know, evil, um, satanic, you know, being, you know, that done this to, to children. We live in a country, folks, that your politicians, your geriatric politicians do not care at all on both sides it's not a democrat thing it's not a republican thing it is both sides okay and what i'm saying today even though of course i speak a lot to the black community anybody that comes on this live if you got children it applies to you what i'm about to say this is why i'm not a proponent of children being in the public school system most of you who are parents that, that study the school system you know it is a great failure to our children um, when we get to the racial aspect, it's definitely a failure and not a safe space for black children. I preach this day in and day out about pulling your children out of public school and either homeschooling your children, because if you look at the statistics, um, homeschool children definitely are a lot smarter because they're getting one-on-one -on -one attention. You're not having all that extra BS that go on in public schools with indoctrination and, and the Karens and the race soldiers and all that now a lot of these schools got got cops and yet the cops never stop anything you notice that but you do know if you don't know uh the police don't have to protect you that goes for everybody they don't have to a uh, supreme court decision said they don't have to protect you because let's say a crime happens to you and you will sue the police department because hey you didn't protect me right i mean well why are we giving all this money to law enforcement if they're not protecting anybody what's the point you know but they make sure to protect you know uh, people that got you know money the elites, they protect them. Now, continuing. So this guy, of course, you know, I knew something was up when I heard he was killed. I said, hmm, he was killed. I say, what, what, what? I say, that don't sound right that he was killed because we had the other guy in Buffalo. He killed 10 people and he, he got to just walk out of there and get, get arrested, but he got killed. So I said, and then when I seen his name get put up like this, I said, ah, okay, okay. Because even though that happened in that school and it's horrible, this country was sti is still moving racially and how they move. Because trust me, if he was a 
uh, Caucasian, they would not put his name out. Well, matter of fact, he just got arrested. He would have been taken to Burger King. But, you know, he was a Hispanic, so, you know, they made sure to kill his behind, which I don't mind that. Beyond which, I think that's justice. Because what he done, why does he need to go to jail for the rest of his life? Why in the hell does he need a trial? But it goes back to what I had a podcast earlier today. And there's a lot of people in our community who's hard headed. And I'm, you know, like, like I say, I'm kicking against the, the, the thorns when I speak to my people in a lot of ways. Um, and, and I'm willing to take those thorns. I'm willing to, to take that bloody foot by kicking against them. I'm willing to do it just so I can reach those who may had what I was saying in their mind for a while. And then when they hear me say it, say, you know what? That's what I've been thinking the whole time. So the podcast, if you go to our The Philip Scott Audio Experience um, podcast channel, um, we, we had a podcast about a lot of black Americans say they don't feel safe in America. They feel scared. They, you know, there's one sister call. She says she's been dealing with these issues and problems since the 60s and nothing has changed. And in that podcast, they had one brother say, you know, this government is not doing anything about it. You know, um, you know, I, I'm done. I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you know, when people say that, because some people have been so, you know, normalized to trauma, um, thinking the way we tr be treated in this country is normal. Um, some people even think they're going to save this place. It's not going to happen. You think they're going to let you take it over? No, they're not, because they'll destroy this place before they let you take anything over, right? But everything is falling apart. I said it in the last day. Everything. Thing is going to hell and the politicians democrat and republican don't care they are blatantly allowing this to happen because they have all the power in the world to do whatever they want to do they got military money they got all kind of things out there that they can do to stop certain things right and they don't care they don't care about the food prices they don't care about the gas prices they don't care about rent you know young kids now can't even move out their parents home anymore Okay, can't move out their parents' home because they want you to make three times the rent. Here in the Houston area, you want to be in a decent place, it's going to cost you $1,200. What kid that's 21, 22 got $3,600 they making unless they already, you know, even if they still in college, right? They're still not going to be at that point just yet to afford some of this stuff. So that's everything going to hell in the handbasket, and your politicians don't care about any of that, and it's their job to, right? So I had a few people that was telling me that, you know, or feel, uh, you know, you, 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 are you promoting, you know, Africa? I never just said Africa. I said, you want to go to the Caribbean? It's fine. That's close to America. You want to go to Latin America? I just know somebody today that, that I didn't know. She moved to Mexico City. I'm like, because we ain't heard from her in a while. Because, you know, my wife and all of make her cakes. Sister Cookie, you know, we ain't heard from her. So I say, hey, well, re you know, reach out to Cookie. See what's going on with her. Find out she in Mexico City. She moved. And my wife asked her, why did you leave, you know, America? She said, I can't deal with it. Me and my husband can't deal with it. You know, they're, they're a good couple, you know, good people. So they couldn't deal with it no more. And, of course, you know, y'all, some of that stuff y'all saying about, um, oh, we don't, we ain't running, we ain't this, we ain't that. Okay, and that's fine. I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm talking to the people that's thinking it's a better life. But when you say we're going to fight, what are you fighting, bro? Like, how are you going to protect our children from, from the, what happened today. What system are you putting in place to stop that? Your politicians that you go out there and vote for, especially Democrat ones, almost 90%, they're not doing anything about it to protect anybody. They're not. Now, oh, the one sister say she went to Jamaica two weeks ago. They said it was a, a, a black paradise. They even have black people on the money. There you go. Now, this is what I will say. They say, oh, well, gun control, gun control. You don't have to do gun control. I could tell you exactly how you can stop all the this, this, this situation with the guns because the Second Amendment is enshrined in the Constitution. So if you say, okay, Phil, what would you do to put a stop to all this? Well, if I was the President of the United States of America and I, and I definitely had the power to do it and I didn't need Congress to do anything, I would regulate the hell out of ammo. I would regulate the hell out of body armor. I would regulate the hell out of any kind of, uh, you know, helmets, anything. I would make that stuff so expensive that you couldn't afford it. 
I would have limits on what you can have. I would tax the hell out the copper that they, they use for the bullets. See, you could if you take the bullets away, then you what could you do? All you got is a paperweight now. Now, some people may make their own, but the average person is just not going to make their own. So, that's what I would do quickly. That's something that could be do, done today is regulate the hell out of ammo. And they can do it. Now, they can't, now the gun thing, see, they can argue about the gun, but they can't argue about the ammo. And see, now I will say this when Barack Obama was in office, he was doing that. He was making it pretty hard to get ammo. And that's what you got to do. You got to take the ammo away. If you take the ammo away, then you make it harder for them to use those guns. And they become nothing, like I said before, but a paperweight. But that's actually trying to do something quickly that your president could actually do without Congress. You understand? This gun lobby that they got in this country. Listen, I live in Texas, okay? And the worst thing that they done was this open carry crap. Now, they had concealed carry before. That's fine. You had to pay your fee. You had to go to a class. You had to prove that you could, you don't know how to use that firearm. I was okay with that. That wasn't enough. that wasn't bad at all. But when they went to last year, this open constitutional carry crap where anybody can just walk around with a gun. Uh, you don't have to be registered. You don't have to do anything. Does anybody can grab one? I mean, it's, it, it's, that's dumb. That is dumb. And, and they told oh, the constitution, the constitution. That's the only thing in the constitution you want to talk about. That's the only thing. It's more than just the, the, the freaking ability to, to kill folk. Uh, to, to, you know what I'm saying? Because you, they're going in there. It, well, who can, we talking about criminals don't follow uh, the law. Of course criminals don't follow the law. They don't. But you can always regulate them, that, that ammo. See, see, this is the thing. That's that Bill O'Reilly, well, this is a price of freedom attitude. I'm beyond with you, because a lot of people have that attitude, like Bill O'Reilly said years ago when they had that Las Vegas shooting. He says, well, that's the price of freedom. So basically, mass shootings, you know, it, you got to deal with that to be free. And it goes back to most countries in the world do not allow their citizens to have that much firepower. Other countries aren't dealing with, and I'm talking about other countries outside the U.S., aren't dealing with constantly freaking mass shootings they're not dealing with elementary school kids being gunned down so think about it as a parent if that was one of your children you went this morning sometimes you fussing with them kids to get up you know they don't want to get up sometime and all of that you know and they're like come on we got to get to school but you got to get to work and all of that so you go as a parent to drop off your child at school right working through your day and then you get a phone call there's been a shooting at your child's school. And you find out that your child was one of the, the, the children who was shot and then later died. Or what if your wife works at the school? You know what I'm saying? Or your husband. And they become a victim. You left, you left them this morning and you went to work, they went to work, you know, and now you're getting a phone call that your, your husband or your wife is gone. They're gone. Going to school. This isn't, this isn't like a bad neighborhood deal. This isn't people that's in that life. This, these are small school age, elementary children, folks, elementary children, elementary. Before, and shout out to sister Sadia. Before, uh, when it was getting too close to the time my little girl to go to school, um, she was trying to convince me for a while to, to put her in a, in a particular school. I said, oh, man, it's going to be a far drive. And, oh, that, I got a school literally right around the corner. And she said, no, don't put your baby in that school. You know, she kept being on me about it. And then around the time I said, okay, I'm not going to do it. They had a kid bring a knife to the school, a knife. They caught him, but he had a knife. You understand? So you got grown adults going to schools, you know, just harming innocent children. And in that, that uh, manifesto from the Peyton white supremacist, he talked about going to elementary school too. So that's why I'm like, hmm. I say, what's this dude's background? What, what is he into? You know what I'm saying? I don't care if he's so-called Hispanic. What was he into? Because you got some people, you know, of, of that community be, look, being the Proud Boys. 
So, so what was he into? That's what I want to know. You know what I'm saying? They're not really saying much about him other than passing his picture and talking about his name. What's his background? What is he talking about online? You know what I'm saying? Well, what, what is he talking about online? I want to know. I want to know. Let me see. Hold on. Make sure. Um, stay safe, you and your family. Yeah, yes, indeed. Pre appreciate you. Yeah, we all need to stay safe. But see, this is okay. So now let's get back to the podcast we made from this morning. When the when 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 a lot of you telling me I'm a fight, I'm a fight, I'm a stay right here and fight. Well, what was your fight and what was your protection mechanism for elementary school children, even in your own community? Where is it? How are you gonna stop that from happening? Since you gonna fight and you gonna do this and do that in your own city, are you protecting the elementary school children? Where where are you at? Are you protecting the middle school children? The high school children who just trying to go to school and get their education? Where are you at? You talking about you gonna fight? See, that, that's why I say the things that I say, and some of y'all don't like what I say, but it's the truth. All that talking about I'm a fight deal, that, that's, that's, some, that's some internet talking for you. We talking about real world, foot on the ground. What, what are you actually doing to, to prevent that? And let's call it what it is. If you want to just be real about our community, we, too, we spread too thin. We spread way too thin as a community. We in this state, that state, that state. And then you look at the census, we don't really have the numbers in a lot of places like that. If we was actually smart and talking about trying to protect ourselves, you really want to stay in America, you would actually done what Dr. Claude Anderson said to do. He said a long time ago how we need to get together. We need to uh, have one mind together, right? Not all this, we not a monolith crap. You got to be a monolith on, on some things. You have to be a monolith. You say African millennial, you say where they at though. Yeah, yeah, they all that, that stuff. Like, I get tired of hearing that. We gonna fight, we gonna this. You ain't fighting crap because why you didn't stop that, that white supremacist in, in, in Buffalo? Where were you to protect them? That's why when I start talking like this, and it's not that we can't do it. It's not that we can't. It's just the collective wherewithal isn't there to do it. We can do it. Oh, hell yeah, we can do it. But where's the collective wherewithal to do it? You know what I'm saying? And when that sister had made that com comment, it stuck with me this morning. When she said, I'm 62 years old, we dealt with this in the 60s. It said in the 70s. It said, and I thought when my grandkids and great-grandkids came, we weren't going to deal with that no more. That, th those kind of conversations stick with me from our elders. You know what I'm saying? When I said, I don't want to be in my 60s and 70s and still dealing with the devil. You know what I'm saying? I, look, listen, schools should be a safe place for your children to go. And it's not a safe place for your children to go. Yes, when you're talking about uh, if you want to do something in America and you're talking about homeland, the black American homeland is the South. That's the black American homeland. California is not where your ancestors started off at. It wasn't in no Chicago. It wasn't. You just studied the great migrations while we went to all the places from Texas all the way up to, you know, Virginia and all the other places like that. You know, the, the traditional South, where our people is at. The, the, the economy of the, America was built from the South. America was built from the South. The, rich, the, the richness of America came from the South. Our ancestors. You know what I'm saying? The South is your, if you want to go homeland, it's the South. And in the census, I was looking at the census today, you can literally see where black people are at. Even in Texas, black people, the, the majority of us are black people are on the east eastern side of Texas. At least there. Now you go start going toward Louisiana and all them different ones like that. You can really see what black people, the counties black people are in. You know, even uh, they have a thing called a diversity index. They got that. Uh, but a lot of black people, they break down all different counties that black people are at, you know. And so you want to say, okay, let me move to this county. There's a good amount of black people or whatever. But we're not even thinking that way. You know what I'm saying? To say, okay, let's, let's move to a particular city. Let, let's, let's take over the politics. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to use Atlanta. Atlanta's like, boy, about 52% black at least. Now, what I don't like to see is who I believe should come back to the South immediately is our movers and shakers in the black community. It needs to be our plumbers, our electricians, our truck drivers, our school teachers, um, our nurses, our doctors, our farmers, you know, um, the builders. We need them. We need them first to to build something. You know what I'm saying? Now I know we got an element in our community that's no earthly good, and I know it. 
I know it. And, 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 and we really don't really need them around like that because they are so, they set on self-destruct mode for the community. And that's a problem that we have. And we gonna have to deal with them too, unfortunately. We gonna have to deal with them in, in our community if you wanna do something. But the reason why I talk about a lot, I think you should have an option, is because even if you do return to the South, even if you do have a get things together, our kids have schools, I, we, we uh, you know, I, I was thinking about it today. You know how you, we like to shame each other for different things? You know, and I'm gonna bring this up because this is this is a relevant topic that, that, that everybody talk about. So, Bronny, I'm pretty sure you've seen the Bronny James situation. I think he went to a prom with uh, one of his white classmates. And, of course, you've seen a bunch of grown folks jumping on a 17-year-old kid about that. Um, of course, Umar got involved and all that. Now, I'm saying, what if we kept that, that type of energy we have for that? And what if we apply it to black-owned businesses? Why, why don't we shame other black people when you're when you picking up, let's say, um, a, let's say in Texas, Blue Bell? You see a black person picking up Bluebell, and you're like, why are you buying that Bluebell for, man? Like, like you selling out. You're giving them folks your money. They got cre uh, Cree Militias right here. That's a black-owned brand that's right here. Look, it's right there. We buy this. We don't buy that mess. Them people ain't supporting us. They said, we support our community. Well, why are we shaming each other about that? You know what I'm saying? Trying to keep the money in the black community. We shame each other on, on some stupidity a lot of times. In my opinion, it don't mean crap. It just, to me, it don't. But we don't shame each other on something. We don't shame each other about walking around with Louis Vuitton. We ain't shaming each other about Gucci bills. We're not shaming each other because all that money goes to all these other communities that don't do nothing for us. And matter of fact, them same companies donate to politicians to screw us over every freaking day. We don't shame each other about shopping with black people, building up black businesses. We, we don't shame each other. Like we don't shame our uh, our rich elite to be, you know, buying land and building communities for the black community. We don't shame them. We can trust me. That shaming works. It worked. Backlash worked very well. Major corporations like Walmart pulled that Juneteenth ice cream out of there because of backlash from black people. So if they were willing to do it, and they don't have to do it. Then what about the, you know, yeah, the the Puffies and the Jay Zs and the you know, now brothers like Robert Smith, every time I look up, he, he giving money. So I can't even say nothing about him. You know, but all them, the ones that, that you don't know, you know, we celebrate degradation in our community, but we don't put pressure on them and say, nah, you're going to break bread with the community. We need schools built because our kids ain't safe. You know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, man, he had it right. He, he would press he would press them people back in the day with the, with the, with the FOI and say, hey, what you going to donate uh, to the community? You going you to give up something. You got to help the community out. See, uh, Elijah Muhammad, when he was around, it was different. It was much different. You understand what I'm saying? Um, okay, well, li well listen. It, anytime somebody say that, you know, well, well, where, well where are you from? Uh, uh, L M N O T. Where, where are you from? Well, where are you actually from? You know, you say it. Well, I'm from Mississippi. It goes back to what I said earlier. The collective wherewithal isn't there. But like I said, yeah, I understand. Like I said, I appreciate the support, but all not going to be saved. I understand that. All people is not going to be saved. They're not going to listen. I get it. I'm a deal. I'm like I said, I got to deal with kicking against the, 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 the thorns. I understand that. I've accepted that that's my lot right now is to kick against the thorns. I, deep down, a lot of black people is anti-black sentiment. Um, because, okay, let's say you don't want to go to Africa. Fine, don't go there. You can't go to the Caribbean. That's a that's black nations right there. You're not far from America. You can get right back to America. That's what two or three hour plane ride in the Caribbean. You can go to Jamaica. Um, you know, um, you can go wherever Barbados. You can go wherever you want to go. Right in the Caribbean, and you're right here next to Babylon. My thing is, I don't want to be that close to them because they do some funny style stuff to the Caribbean sometimes. And also, uh, the Caribbean. My issue with that is not the people, but it is the hurricanes. I don't want to deal with hurricanes. I'm, mm -mm, I don't want to deal with hurricanes whatsoever. I done had enough of hurricanes, you know, or whatever. Um, have you lived there? That's the thing. Y'all do all that talking. You haven't even lived there. You even got friends over there. I talk to people in many African countries all day long. They tell me the good, the bad, and, and in between. They tell me all of it. And I don't hear nobody telling me, oh, they took my bank account. I ain't heard nobody say that. But Wendy Williams got her bank account uh, froze. Wendy Williams got her bank account froze from Wells Fargo. 
because they they said that oh she was doing some funny style stuff with her money then now they unfroze her account but then they just said that well she got to have a financial guardian for the money that she earned who do, this is this is a black woman that had her money uh, basically stolen you talking about dictators well what's that then freezing your bank account what's that about she didn't commit no crimes she wasn't trapping out of her bank account she wasn't doing anything these people will sabotage black folks all day long. They will sabotage black folks. It's a drop of a dime. It don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter if you got the means to do whatever. These folks, when they want to get at you, they'll sabotage you. They'll do this. They'll freeze your accounts. They'll do whatever the hell they want to do. They'll turn your life upside down. Man, what y'all what y'all talking about, bro? What would they say? You say I was listening to the video about well, you got you got weakness everywhere, but then you got people like Julius Malema, you know, and hit the people that roll with him. They some head busters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't listen, them folks know who to try. They know who to try. Even here in America, they know who to try. They notice they try certain people. How is it that I'm not saying I'm the baddest dude in the world and I'm just ready to pick fights with anybody, but they don't try me. I've never had them just mess with me like that. I ain't had no Karen run, run up on me or, or just do whatever because I just keep a certain energy around me at all times. They know they know who to try. Trust me, they know they they sense that they sense it in a lot of you. They sense it. They they like the dogs that that can smell fear. And you know when a dog smell fear out of you, they they just go and attack your behind and bite you. That that's what goes on. But when it comes it goes back to the school situation, folks. These politicians don't care. They ain't trying to protect. Definitely ain't trying to protect black folk. And they ain't trying to protect nobody else either. They getting a bag. Y'all sitting up there going vote for them. And this is the thing. Now you got to see that none of the politicians care. So, so what you gonna do? What you gonna do about that? Um, like I said, I I believe purposely, 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 they're trying to uh, ruin the country. Let me see. Yak Diesel say, hence the importance of banking black and say one, one united carbon save, savings and there are so many options to choose from black folks support black owned banks. Yeah, I agree with that, but also I tell black folks it's better to have a credit union than a bank. Credit unions. is way better than a bank. Um, let me see. Hold on. Let's say, okay, we're not from the U.S. either. We can, let me tell you something. Black people are indigenous to the planet. Once again, black people are indigenous to the planet Earth. We have, we are everywhere in every nation. And part of what I want to do over the years is show you that. Is travel to many nations and show you where black people are at. So you can see, wow, black people are here? Black people are there? Man, black people in Panama? Black people are here? But, you know, just wherever. We are everywhere. We're indigenous to the planet. They, they just told you years ago black people were the first Europeans. I mean, we indigenous to the freaking planet. You know what I'm saying? So anywhere I put my foot, you know, I'm good. That's why I want. Nah, I don't want to be in no no Western nation. That's for sure. But do whatever you think you need to do. My message is for the people that see what's going on and see it ahead of time. Because the problem is, one thing my grandfather said about black people a long time ago. He said black people love to talk big talk. He said that a long time ago, and I said, Grandpa, what you mean by that? He said, black people love to run their mouth. They gonna tell you what they not gonna do, what they not gonna put up with, what they gonna do, uh, what you better not do. He said, then when they get in the thick of an issue or a problem, they crying, looking for help. You say, but, but you ask them, what happened to all that big talk you had? You know what I'm saying? So all that big talk that you see people doing comment sections and all that, Man, I've been schooled, schooled by a lot of old school black people, and I'm glad about that. I'm glad I was around a lot of elders to school me, um, talking to elders everywhere I go sometime, you know, and I just look at it with reality, because some things sound good online, and that's great, but what is reality saying? What are you doing in your everyday life? See, I'm trying to tell you what's real. I'm not just trying to sound good so I can get clicks and views and likes and super chats and whatever, and then when something get bad, you know, I got I got the ability to do this and then third because I I'm doing all my whatever I'm I'm just capitalizing right but you have no information at least at least through here I've told you many times the steps and the process how to at least start having options how many people start telling you the process to start having options and we ain't talking about going to no country to trick off 
We ain't talking about no no dating with that. We talking about just having an option. I'm the one been telling people for a long time, get your dog on passport, sign up, go to the freaking uh, uh, court, court, well, some places, you know, go to the courthouse is faster or you can go to the post office, whatever. Go pay, go pay the money, take the picture and do that. Bring your birth certificate. I would suggest order a copy, a certificate copy your birth certificate the uh the, you know of course the book which runs you like 153 dollars or so if you even don't even use it for 10 years at least you got the option to do it get you a safe have you so try to save at least you know by well, it depends on how big your family is in the u.s you can only take out ten thousand dollars out of the country uh, at a time um you know get you a safe a real good fireproof safe and have that stash money they hey i got my passport i got my 10 grand i got you know if you got a wife hey we got 20 grand we got whatever we can go whatever we need to go you go to certain countries that that you know you can use your, your debit and credit card like it like it's no different than here like you know uh, south africa kenya and then places like that you know cool or whatever make friends in these other countries you know what i'm saying make friends like the blantons you know with, with real south africa mark and latasha they went back and forth between South Africa and uh, America for years. They just didn't jump up and leave. They took care of their business here. They got the money they need to get from here, and they went over there. And trust me, they live very, very good over there. And they happen. And when they say, I ain't trying to come back here, for what? You know what I'm saying? And they were successful here. Look, I tell people all the time, I do very well in America. I, I don't have to say I'm going to some other country for a better life. The better life for me is peace of mind. That's the better life for me. He said, today's events, they say, is just a reminder why I talk so much about entrepreneurship. Yeah. He said, you're right. We need options. Keep up. Yes, we need options. 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 Black folks need options. You have, you are so socialized to get a job. Getting a job means you're controlled. Getting a job means uh, the Mzungu uh, gives you your daily bread. The black men and women who get up every day and who are entrepreneurs, they don't have to worry about anything. Because they, let me tell you something, an entrepreneur can go to any country and get and get the bag. That's why I love to talk to black men and women who got businesses. I love it. I love it. I don't care. They just started their business to ones that just, um, you know, um, has been in it for a while. I love it. Because, like I said, you're not going to make hundreds of millions of dollars working for somebody. They, they, they sabotage you. Some of you brothers and sisters are so educated. You're so smart. Yeah, I mean, you are, you are. You could be making millions of dollars, but you're sitting at a job working with them folks. You know what I'm saying? Why? You're too talented for that. And we need the talented people to be building schools and do the things for our children. We need that. So they don't have to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? They don't have to. It's our job to protect our children. It's our job. And we need, and like I said, get out of the job mentality and get into an entrepreneurship mentality so we can protect our children. Because all them politicians and, and even some of these business owners, they don't send their kids to them public schools, so they don't even have to worry about uh, uh, nobody running up in there. You know what I'm saying? What, what private school have you heard, or even a child's home school, dealing with being shot up by, by a mass murder? Who, who do, you don't hear that mess? You don't hear it. And I will work hard all day long. Like with my daughter, I've told this story many, many times before. You know, my daughter, she, I had her in the school. Let's like say it was a black, black home, black run school, but some things, you know, after COVID, this thing, it didn't go a certain way it should have been. So we decided to pull her out and hire one of the teachers from the school to do homeschool. So it's basically one-on-one -on -one teaching. I will work hard and pay her, uh, the sister, whatever I got to pay her to make sure that my child is not in a situation where she got to be subjected to that. Because my child, when she's getting to school, she's in this house. She's in this house. That's where she at, getting her education. Well, with her black teacher. Period. Now, if I was just working a regular job, I don't know if I can even do certain things that I do. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to, you got, even if you work in a job and you got an idea for a business, Start the business while you're working the job. And you're going to have to get out of that uh, only want to work one job. No, you have to work a job and work your business at the same time until you get the money to eventually say, okay, I'm leaving now. I got, I got the bag enough to, to walk away. You got to be an entrepreneur, folks, because this, 
This is why a lot of people say, we ain't got money. I know why you say that, because most people that talk like that work a job. That's to be honest with you, they work a job. I mean, look at me. I have learned, you know, through, and through the grace of God, I have learned, you know, when I was a kid, they used to say, I talk a lot, hold a mouth, and all kinds of stuff you say about me. But God has blessed me to just talk and provide for my family. Now, we live in a society where we can just talk and earn funds. You can cook, and I know somebody who's a caterer. You know, that sister, throw down, make a lot of money, catering. My wife, you know, she's a cake artist. That's what she do. She make her money that way. You know, I know people who are personal trainers, black people, you know, making money. So many different people are making money out here where you don't have to punch a clock, ladies and gentlemen. And, 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 and that frees you. That frees your time. You ain't got to ask nobody for no time all saying, can I have vacation time? Grown, what, what grown person need to be asking them folks, could you go take off? You want to take off? You go take off. You want to go to Jamaica? You want to go to Barbados? You want to go to wherever you want to go. You want to go to Ghana? You want to go wherever to vacation? Take some time off. Go do it. Hell, working from home is the future anyway. Find you a work from home job. Listen, if you can find you a work from home job, you got freedom. That's why young people don't even want to go back to the office. For what? Work from home. That way you can live wherever you want to live. Um, you say you got options. It's the LLCs plus legal protection. It's I'd be in touch. It's I would like to work with the lost and exploited black women. Um, this I started my foundation. They feel real in the bush. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody, everybody uh, could do something, man. I mean, but we got to be more self-sufficient. That's that's why we in trouble because we we just depend on these people all day long, and you feel there's no option, and you feel like, well, I'm gonna fight for this. Fight for what? What are you fighting for? A country that's literally going to the toilet because of the politicians? It's not because of me and you. It's not even really because of the average citizen. It is the politicians, the Republican and Democrat. It's both of them. Now one of them are good for anybody, black or white, or, any, or anybody else that's in between. But unfortunately, most people don't recognize that because, it, because the politicians, uh, Democrat and Republican, use racism to keep division going in the country. Both of them use it if you want to be honest with you. Actually, more people got more in common than what they think. Just to be real with you, like for instance, you think the gas price that we paying is different than what the white folks are paying? No, we all paying the same gas price. We all paying the same food. We all dealing with the same miseducation. We all dealing with the same crap other than, other than the social currency that, that white folks have. That's the only thing they got over us is social currency and privilege. Outside of that, they ain't got much nothing going on either. They live paycheck to paycheck. They're not rich whatsoever. They're not rich. A few of them got some slave money, but the, the majority of them ain't got nothing. If you really travel this country enough, you will see white folks are struggling. Trust me, some of them are struggling worse than black folks. But that was struggle. Man, I ain't, I ain't see. Boy, I'm telling you, I've seen white folks struggle. Uh, man, black folks be looking like a million bucks in the hood compared to what they be looking like in places like West Virginia and all them places like that. Man, please, y'all need to travel this country. And you, you really get it out your head and you think these folks got it together. They don't. They, they, it's a big lie. The only thing they got over you is, is that privilege. Other than that, ain't much. And then really the ones that got all the privileges, the ones that got the money in their community. And they sell them racism and, and say, who you're so much better than black folk. But they getting screwed over every day too. <laughs> but that's the issue problem. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we got to deal with the reality of what we're dealing with here. Um, in, in this country but when I tell people when you tell me you're gonna fight you're gonna do this you're gonna do that well sh show me send, send me send me the video and the pictures of you protecting the elementary school tomorrow if you're gonna fight just send it to me you know this happened okay well I need to see y'all see y'all lined up at the school tomorrow protecting the schools I need to see y'all lined up and protecting the elderly if you're gonna fight but you also want to fight Pookie and Ray Ray too you know, because they, they, they are destructive in the black community. That's what I'm saying. When you send me messages from now on telling me you fighting and you're going to fight and you're going to do just send me the video. Listen, I will promote your, your, your video. I will promote your pictures. I say, I mean, look at that brother. He act, look at this sister. Look at these people. they actually standing up and fighting for the community. Send it to me. Now, they got some people that are fighting for the community, like New Era Detroit, and you got different, you know, uh, Black Panther groups and there's different people here and there, but it's pockets of people doing it. It's not them. So I'm talking about those outside of those people that's fighting. 
the collective of people who was to come in these comment sections, just send me the videos of you fighting. And then if I see you fighting, I will say, you know what? Yes, they are fighting. But from what I see as a collective stance, you ain't doing crap. So stop. Like I say, stop the cap. It sounds good on, on, on a comment section. You know what I'm saying? Do you think it's easy to, to tell somebody to pick up and go? Even even if it's to Africa, it's still not what we used to, right? But these politicians in this country, you know, is literally trying to ruin this country. They're not doing nothing to fix it, folks. They're not doing nothing to fix it. Well, it's getting kind of dark out here. I know y'all see that. Y'all not going to be to see me for too long, right? So anyway, I um, just want to step in and just holler at y'all about that. I need to get back up to my studio. I need to get some work done. Um and everything just to work on some protecting these children you know in your city I ain't talking about go to some foreign place I'm like your city you're not doing all that and talking about you gonna fight 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 and you ain't gonna run and you ain't go okay I'm not telling you to run nowhere I'm just telling you show me your fight that way I can promote your fight because what I see it ain't no fighting going on all you want is a job you want to you want to drink on the weekend go to the club and smoke your weed that's all you want to do that that's what you're fighting to do you're fighting to do that don't get me started, cause I I, I, don't, I don't smoke no weed. I don't I don't drink like that. I, I I don't do it. I don't look forward to going to no clubs. I, that's not what I do. I I got a lot more things in my head that I could be doing. That's 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 actually productive. Enjoying time with my family. Yeah, like Malcolm Black down there told me nobody is fighting. That's right. Ain't nobody fighting. All that talk about I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I don't do this. I, you know, it, all of a sudden everybody talking about fighting. All of a sudden when we talk about Africa or, or going to the Caribbean, going somewhere, you ain't got to go to Africa. Go to the Caribbean. It, all of a sudden everybody fighting. You know what I'm saying? It's funny to me to hear them say that I'm fighting. I'm fight. I'm a fight. I'm gonna do this. It, 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 but but I don't know. See nothing you're doing. Anyway, folks, let, let me go ahead and go. Thank you for coming to the to the uh, short stream. We appreciate it. Uh, make sure you subscribe the first time. Um, click the like button. And